This is something I really love. He's so weird. This is a taxidermied raccoon named Ronaldo. Um, and Ronaldo, my dad got for me. He was like out shopping with my sister and he got her a Louis Vuitton bag. And he's like, we got this for Britta and I found something special for you too. And I was like, oh great, purse. Uh, and he shows up in the driveway of this building with this and he sticks it in the open trunk and just like lets people walk by and watch it thinking that there's actually a, a raccoon eating Cracker Jack. Um, and then he just like walks down the street with it and hands it to me. I'm like, thank you. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Like and subscribe for more. Hey, welcome to my Upper East Side apartment. Hi, I'm Angelina Lippert, the chief curator of Poster House, the first and only museum in the United States dedicated to the art and history of posters. This is the first poster I bought, um, or actually I didn't buy it. My boyfriend at the time bought it. Um, and then I, we moved to London, and when we broke up, he threw it in the frame out of the top floor of our apartment, which was the like fifth or sixth floor of a walk-up, um, and obviously destroyed the frame. And then the new boyfriend and I had to like sneak under stealth of night to grab it from like the street garbage and take it back to our new apartment. Um, so this has survived much. Um, I also love it because it's essentially, it's a female goose mourning her dead husband who's now in the can. So it's like super morbid, which is very much my style. <laughs> Because this is a poster for pate. Oh yes, uh, I think it's, I think that's now illegal in New York, so sorry. So this is like a white box kind of rental. There is not a lot you can do with it because I don't own it. Um, so I worked with my friend Bachman Brown, who's a designer in New York. He's amazing. And so he really understood, A, I'm not putting a ton of money into it because I don't own it. Um, and so he was very creative with how we made the apartment my own. This is the jazz lounge, uh, which is essentially where all the dancing happens after any dinner party I have, because dancing is a, an essential component to any event I host. Uh, so this is a Cadovius wall unit. It's a mid-century modern piece. I love it because it's huge. Usually having four bays is kind of hard to find. Um, and we found this at White Trash Vintage in the East Village. And normally these things are like five grand. These are really expensive, but we got it for like around a thousand dollars, which was insane at the time. And I just absolutely love it. All Nabokov first editions. I'm really obsessed with Russian literature and I love Nabokov. So all of his first editions are here, including Lolita. And then over here we have my bar. Um, it's one of many bars in this house. Um, and this one actually is a really funny story because Bachman and I were looking for like a liquor cabinet, a, a bar, something. Um, and we couldn't find one that was very mid-century that we really loved. And then I found this on eBay and I had to rent a pickup truck with my boyfriend and we had to go to a Jersey toll booth and pick this up from a toll booth worker because he found it in his mom's house. Um, so I love it. And it even has like the original lights fixture still lights up. It's like the light bulb from the 50s. Um, so this is like a little reading area I have. I take my coffee here in the morning sometimes on the weekends. This is Bubba, the rubber tree. All the plants have names. Um, I'm a, I don't have children, I don't have pets, so I'm a plant mom. Um, and then over here is a Congolese chair that my dad's father brought back from the Congo in the 30s. Um, it was always in the house and it, always, it looks terribly uncomfortable, but it is like the most comfortable chair for my back. Well, so as I mentioned before, I'm the chief curator of a poster museum in New York. And so this is my wall or cloud, if you will, of vintage posters. They range from the 1890s through the 19, let's see, 40s. Um, so this one in particular I love. It's by Leonardo Cappiello. He's known as the father of modern advertising. He changed the way uh, public-facing advertising functioned in, in the world. And all of these are done via stone lithography, so each color means it was a different pass on a lithographic press. So this is incredibly labor-intensive and precise. Um, and I love this. It's advertising cookies. This one is for a like um, railroad restaurant that had a buffet um, in Basel, Switzerland, and it looks just like my dad, so that's why we got it. Uh, this one is for sparkling wine, this one and this one for Ricards, uh, that's for like the German equivalent of the Four Seasons Grill. Uh, and then over here is a war era poster reminding you not to waste food, um, which is again, essential component to all my dinner parties. In terms of pricing, how can a poster range? Oh, I mean posters have a huge price range. Some I've gotten here for like a couple hundred dollars, some which I don't have here are a million dollars. It really depends. So this is the office. Um, and this room just has a bunch of like fun random stuff. Uh, like for example, this is a mini version of a Ghanaian fantasy coffin. Um, I worked on the show on Ghanaian movie poster painting last year, and so I got really into various forms of Ghanaian art. And one of them is if, uh, if you live on the coast, there's a tradition of creating fantasy coffins that essentially represent something about you when you were alive. So if you were a painter, you would get buried in a giant paintbrush. 
Um, and then I was in Nashville and I saw this and I was like, wait, Pajo, Pajo is the most famous Ghanaian fantasy coffin maker. And I was like, he did minis? Um, so I got this like mini, it like opens up. It's a mini cigarette coffin. And I don't smoke, but obviously like smoking was such a part of being at Smith College as, as like an aesthetic uh, that it brings me back. This piece belonged to my dad's best friend. I have no idea what's happening, but it was in our basement for so long when I was a kid that when I moved out, I was like, I really want to take this with me. What is it? I have no idea. No idea, absolutely no idea. I've tried to like find a narrative and it's not like a comic book. Like there's no linear progression. I've tried to like tic-tac-toe it or something. It does not, I want to know, I want to know what this is. If the, somebody knows what this is, please tell me. This desk, Bachman Brown found it for me, some, I forget, some, somewhere he found it. And what's really cool about it, A, I, I love a huge desk, but it used to be a psychoanalyst's um, desk because there's this drawer over here that now like holds all my stamps and stuff. But this is where you would put the tape recorder if you were recording your sessions with your, um, with your client. So I'm like, great, I'm just gonna like record everyone when they come in now. I have RuPaul, the money tree. I've got my snake plant. I have Figaro, the fig tree that's not doing so hot. But this is my pride and joy. This is Griselda. She's a very rare cactus. Don't ask me what kind of cactus. Um, but she's named Griselda after the glamour cat in Cats, the musical. Now, is she supposed to have fur growing up? Yeah, yeah. She's, she's a furry cactus. She's supposed to have fur. Um, she's got Actually, she's got some new shoots right now, which is very exciting. This is like the time of year that she gets all excited. Um, but she always looks like she's about to die. The first time I came home and found her completely fallen over, um, I was like, ah! But apparently that's what she does. This is known as the bad girl room, and that's because everything in here is pretty sexual. <laughs> it's also the TV room, technically. Um, so I've got a lot of posters here for essentially softcore porn. Um, showgirls and like that beat generation, like live fast, die young. I also have over behind me, these are two photographs. They are, they are some of the earliest known posed photographs of prostitutes. This, they were taken in Reading, Pennsylvania. Um, so this is live fast, die young. I got it because I have the commercial advertising the film on vinyl. Um, so when I saw the poster, I was like, well, clearly I need the poster too. Um, then Snow Bunnies is amazing. Like she's, fall she's fallen in the snow while skiing, topless. Um, cause of course that would happen. Uh, and I got it cause my nickname is Bunny. So anything Bunny related, I tend to gravitate toward. This is just a very sassy showgirl I got when I worked at my last job. Um, this, I was downtown. I walked by Chisholm Larson Gallery and I've known them for 16 years. And I was like, oh my God, a mermaid sex film. I must buy this. Um, so I love this. Um, and I, I just love the camp of it. Like the fact that there's like a trident for the E or the like, if you can stand that fishy smell, you'll love the mermaid. <laughs> uh, and then Nude on the Moon, again, just like a really classic, uh, like nudist film. One of the things that we were very keen about when I moved in was making sure that the closet was an experience. Um, and it's an experience. Take me in. Do I? <laughs> um, okay, so we have blouses, we have short dresses, there's a gown closet for the long dresses, um, and skirts and suits. I wore this when we did, we did a, t a lecture called The Gay Agenda at work about communist, um, like, like very communist posters that showcased like gay themes. And this is like this crazy vintage suit with like this brocade in ruby and this velvet collar. It is, it's like a, it's like a bathrobe, but it's a suit. Okay, so I was in Thailand a few years ago and my mom, they were like, oh, you have to have something made if you're in Thailand. And I was like, well, I only like weird patterns. So I found this duck hunting print um, and they made me kind of a Donna Reed 1950s housewife dress out of it, which I love. So I was on a road trip with an ex through New Mexico and we stopped we found this man's 1950s style like drinking shirt and it's got all booze all over it. And so this is my official cocktail making shirt. Anything else? Nothing, nothing <gasps> like, oh my God. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, you saw this. Um, so I, um, I follow bull riding. I go to a lot of bull riding events. And so I was in Nashville and um, Manuel, who used to, he, he took on after um, like the nudie suit trend. Uh, so he, he made me this custom jacket for, for bull riding. So it's got the cactus flower. It's got the bull on the back. Um, or rather the steer head. And then there's like a spur with my initials on it um, and, a, and a horseshoe. So if you go to bull riding, you will see me wearing this. Now we're going into my bedroom. Um, so this is actually one of my favorite posters. It is for the French release of a German public health film on the dangers of syphilis 
which I think is very important to remind people when they come into my bedroom. Um, so I love her. So now we're in my bedroom. Um, this is one of my favorite pieces. This is a statue by Leonardo DiCaprio. That's the guy who did that cookies poster we talked about earlier. Um, he did a few sculptures, not too many, and I saw this one at a dealer's house. I had to buy it, and the only other copy I've seen is uh, in the collection of the Musée d'Orsay, so pretty awesome. Um, but Bachman and I have been looking for um, a bedroom set forever. Couldn't find anything. And then the last day, uh, we went to the attic of an antique store in New Jersey that was like really run down. And I saw this. And I immediately texted my mother and I was like, hey mom, how much was your bedroom set in the 70s? And she's like, a couple thousand dollars. I was like, well, it's $75 now. Um, so this is the exact same bedroom set my mother has in her house that she's had since I was born. I just love this dresser. I'm never getting rid of it. Click here to watch another amazing home tour and be sure to subscribe to Homeworthy.